Uh, next, we come to our Muppet of the Month. And this Muppet was not hard to decide upon. Uh, it was quite straightforward, especially when 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 we take in, con into consideration the conversation that's unfolded around this act of Muppetry. Uh, this is specifically the story of... Um, I need to get his name right. Freddie Bentley uh, of The Circle. Uh, he is apparently an Instagram influencer in the same way that you and I are YouTube influencers, of course. You know, we are internet celebrities. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you go around the corner to your local your local bakery and they're like, oh, it's that guy off YouTube. Yeah, well, give me a sausage roll. Um, no, in all, in all seriousness, this chap... <clears throat> This chap is one of those people who has millions of followers, uh, has been thrust into the limelight, and, and in this instance is being asked, well, being folded into a discussion on acts of remembrance. We are, of course, approaching uh, the 11th of the 11th, and, uh, and the, well, the headline on Good Morning Britain, probably Britain's fa favourite, if not second favourite, morning TV show. It's Even not... though it includes Piers even though it, even though it includes Piers Morgan, and, it's, and in that sense, I I don't tend to watch this this in the morning, but uh, other people do. Um, the headline here on the screen was: Do millennials? Uh, so I'll, I'll repeat that: Do millennials need to know about the Second World War or about WW two? It says here. Uh, contestants on The Apprentice. Uh, 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 Actually, there's an apprentice, for example, in the US as well as in the TV show, yeah. uh, revealed that they didn't know when World War II began. It seems that the that, that, that younger people, of which I am scarcely one now, I'm you know, in my I'm mid certainly not. my mid thirties. I'm, I'm the father of two who might be defined as <laughs> as younger people, exactly. Yeah, um, but people, it seems, in their in their late teens, early twenties, mid twenties, those people. Uh, are increasingly detached from facts that maybe you and I might have taken for granted. I certainly grew up knowing the dates of the of the first of the Second World War. Absolutely, First World War I think was a bit more ephemeral for me as a child. I seem to recall, but even then I knew it lasted roughly four years, and I could roughly locate when it was ish. Uh, but in this instance, actually, um, Freddie is making the argument that uh, that learning about the Second World War is bad for mental health. Uh, he was quoted as, and, and you'll have to forgive um, some of this 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 language because it's a bit weird uh, in terms of how he's talking. Mental health is completely on the rise now, he said. I don't think encouraging death and telling people how many people died in a world war is going to help someone in the future. And 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 at this point, I think it's probably worthwhile saying other people. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll include the conversation thread to this uh, on the Arcade Facebook page in the links below. Um, it had 189 reactions and 92 comments, 49 shares. Of course, I need to know that because I'm an internet celebrity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Got to monitor the analytics. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, for the people who are listening to this and not watching, I should say sarcasm um but the the the, argue, the conversation here often revolved around essentially people not quite knowing who on earth this person was uh, other people arguing arguing that actually he's too young to be counted as a, a millennial apparently i am uh, a millennial i didn't know that apparently uh, being born in the mid 80s um and so people basically were, were, were actually asking I think quite rightly, do we even need to know this person's opinion? Should we even be discussing this person's opinion about the Second World War? But even if we if we park that for a second, the, the, he is being a Muppet, I agree. But also maybe this highlights a serious issue about education and the purpose of acts of remembrance, as opposed to it being, say, a feeling about quote unquote we won the war maybe actually that needs to be intimately connected to actual history and actual acts of remembering when things happened and how they happened why they happened and not just uh, not just not just uh, forcing this this young man seemingly against his will apparently to remember what he thinks as as horrific things as opposed to historic things if that makes sense I, I so I know I know I've covered a couple of different angles that I'll, I'll pass over yeah. to you yeah, I mean, I, I think this. Uh, I mean, first of all, it is an epic level of muppetry, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, I think I have to look at this first of all in, the, in, in its media context. Mm. Programs at GMB, um, one of their one of the ways they judge their success 
is how many Twitter storms they provoke, how many discussions they have that then get followed up on, on, on social media and so on. And often guests will be booked with the idea that they will generate conflict, they will generate controversial comments, hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, and, and that there'll be follow up, which will in increase the, uh, you know, the brand recognition of the, the of the program and justify it in terms of, of audience. Uh, well, so, in that, and in that sense, so, Pierce Morgan's brand is say something to annoy people yeah. and then rake in the money from the attention. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look at the the ongoing feud between two brilliant users of Twitter, Piers Morgan and Gary Lineker. Well, I thought, um, you, I thought you were going to say Greg's then about the uh, the vegan sausage roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just one of them. Yeah, no, yeah. The, no exactly. The, 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 the vegan sausage roll story is, is an absolute case in point. Yeah. Or, or Gary Lineker um, as a as a well known supporter of of remaining in the European Union. Uh, and Piers yeah, Morgan yeah. born again, yeah. uh, 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 and, and, and well known for uh, his, um, shall we say, slightly less than probing interviews with his good friend Donald Trump. Yes, allegedly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, so that so that that's the that's the program that this that, that this comes from. Mm -hmm. um, yes, of course, it's all, it's also in the run up to November the eleventh. It was in the, the story broke in the um, run up to the, the launch of. Uh, in fact, I think it was after the the, um, the launch of uh, this year's Poppy Appeal by the Royal British Legion, because mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 and um, the uh, which again in the UK is the annual remembrance. Uh, it, it raises funds for veterans charities and um, and, and veterans um, of, of service in the British Armed Forces. Mm -hmm. um, which in itself is controversial these days. Some people argue that um, we've got an over uh, overdeveloped sense of um shall we say our military past um and that uh our less uh, 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 our relationship with world war one particularly world war two has been pretty negative in terms of our relationship with europe and in terms of the way the relationship with europe is presented by certain people um there's well a... and 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 it's probably worthwhile just saying that, that this is something that i've definitely touched on in the past, I made a, a video not that long ago, a little video essay, I guess, not that long ago, saying that Britain needs to stop its World War II obsession. But yeah. I, but it's also worth. In fact, there was a there was a very interesting article um, by Pauline Toy in the Guardian, I think it was yesterday, uh, where she was arguing that again, it's time to tone down this national commemoration of uh, the World Wars, particularly as they're now going out of living memory and it's becoming a sort of almost like a sort of, um, a, 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 I guess a, this sort of. Um, national obsession almost well to, except to, to, except to show you have to show respect you except know. that i mean my, um, my 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 point though in in saying that was to say also that i i it, it i don't believe that we need to stop acts of remembrance i i think i think there's a difference between being obsessed with the conflict and the mythology of the conflict of the second world war yeah. and having accurate and and honor, honorable acts of remembrance and actually honoring the true events and the things that happened to real people in those conflicts uh, and so so in that sense uh, there, there are extremes on this this conversation and and in the past i'm sure what i've said could be seen as being with uh <laughs> with our uh, our friend uh, freddie here but it's not i think there's a very there's a very subtle difference here well there are very important difference not subtle it's not subtle at all it's a very important difference you don't um the second world war is used and abused in various ways in our in our society in britain it just is uh, and i think that freddie here has been a victim of that this cultural pressure that, that i think lots of young men i've talked about this in the past feel in britain as being compared to this myth of the war and the fact that we don't even have to say which war we mean when we say the war is an important uh, marker to, to, the, to this pressure but what Freddie's doing here is he's commenting from a, I guess, what sounds like a less than highly educated perspective, I, I shall say. I'm not going to rush to say he's stupid, um, but, but he's not thinking deeply about, about this. He's simply saying, it makes me feel bad and maybe we shouldn't be doing it. Uh, and and this, this is this is the muppetry, and 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 so I think that there is, there is a there is a argument to be made, as you quite rightly say, people are making this argument in national newspapers that we need to think about our relationship to remembrance. But perhaps I would I would suggest 
it's actually more specific than that. We need to think about the function of remembrance and how that function serves society today and whether or not that's health, uh, a healthy function and relationship. By no means should we stop remembrance, I don't think. Absolutely. No, no. Mm. I mean, my, my, my own take on this, and, I, and, I, and I'm speaking here as uh, an archaeologist who's got a special a speciality in the archaeology of conflict. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, I've just been writing about uh, the relationship between uh, what, the, 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 what I think is a very interesting um, situation, coincidence, or maybe not, maybe mm -hmm. more than that, that, for example, the people who started digging up crash World War II aircraft, like, uh, and particularly, this is particularly in connection with Spitfire, um, that um, the, the, the people who started doing that in the 1960s were the generation of people coming immediately after the war who hadn't served in the war, mm. but who had grown up watching films like Reach of the Sky and the Dam Busters and Angels 1-5, and reading commando comics and uh, and so on so they didn't have their war to fight no um but what they did have was a chance to explore vicariously and develop this national mythology. relationship this national mythology yeah well and it's interesting because I, I actually i've inherited a couple of of annuals that my dad had when he was a, basically well i i read them when i would have been when i was the age that he would have been i was about eight years old when he, he was reading these stories and um and and it's interesting because because i am part of British culture. When I read a story where Commando Joe is crawling through the jungle and, in various through various small acts of adventure, uh, makes his way into a, a Nazi camp in some uh, non-bespoke area, and then stabs this guy in the neck, um, and then goes on to you know, I don't know rescue the girl or blow up the plane or whatever he's there to do, uh, because it came from that context of the Dam Busters of every Christmas showing The Great Escape on TV. I wasn't remotely shocked by that at all. I didn't really think about what I was looking at. Now I think, I just think it is a little bit crass and it bears no, it, it, has, a, it has a root in that conflict and it has a social, there's a social map. You can tell, as you say, it's the next generation and, and they're thinking about the experiences of their parents and it's being presented in a heroic way. Because of course you're going to present war in a heroic way. You can only do that. that that's that's natural and normal. What else are you going to say? Oh, well, everyone before you, well, we murdered a whole load of people. I, I, I recognise that the mythologizing is part of, of, of remembrance. It has to be. Eulogizing as well. But... Uh, but it's interesting that now we seem to be, and in the case, in the person of Freddy here, of this this Muppet, uh, I, I would suggest that he he's he's making all these these weird connections because we've gone so far down the path of simply telling people you will you will remember, and if you don't, then there's something wrong with you. That that actually we're, we're disconnecting from from the historical narrative. We are disconnected oh, I, from it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I just make a, a, a few short points, really, mm -hmm. just to finish. Mm -hmm. um, one is that, you know, the worst kind of remembrance, I think, the, I said the worst kind, the most socially destructive kind of remembrance, mm. in, in, certainly in terms of our political discourse, is the kind we've been seeing, for example, um, there's a, a Conservative MP, called, uh, well, a uh, prospective parliamentary candidate now, as there are no MPs since we had our general election call, uh, Mark Francois, mm -hmm. um, a, a right-wing conservative rectator, mm. who uh, a few uh, a couple of months back uh, tweeted that uh, I think it, I think uh, I'm not quoting uh, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but not by much. Mm. Uh, he said something along the lines of, uh, "My dad went ashore on D-Day, um, and he didn't go through all that to be bossed around by the Germans." Yeah, and he says that on TV all the time as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He says that on TV yeah. too all the time. Yeah. I mean, to to, to the uh, and, and and you know, he's gen widely regarded as um, not the brightest one in the box. In fact, somebody once described him as a semi-sentient Frey Bentos pie. Do you know? Do you know? Um, I, I I was going to say that, and then I thought, no, I'll refrain from saying that. But no, okay, you're right. Someone has said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, he, but no, but, 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 but the point, yeah. the point, the point is that you know that this this mythology can be used and abused, and in the worst cases, and I'm certainly not accusing Mark Francois of this, but in in the worst cases on the far right, hmm. um, the mythology of World War Two is uh, used um, in in terms of promoting 
nationalism and racism and uh, but also the mythology from both sides because neo Nazis mm-hmm. um, have their own uh, mythologies of, mm-hmm. of and remembrances of World War Two related to organisations like the Waffen SS. Mm-hmm. You know, so and, and that that is my real justification for saying we have to be aware of these discourses and make them part of our cultural life and and question them all the time because if we don't then those myths will be able to be to take hold and be exploited and can be potentially very dangerous indeed you know if if and again i'm not talking about the germans i'm talking about the nazi regime Mm -hmm. if 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 the political and racial ideology that underpin nazism um you know is allowed to take root again we saw where it ended up last time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and i'd say that again about far left ideologies as well you know there's attempts to rehabilitate stalin in russia at the moment for example as a national as a a strong nationalist leader which is astonishing yeah 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 Uh, um so you know so so we so we so we so we have to be aware you know and uh, you know, sorry, Freddie. It's it's good for society that we know about these things and discuss them. The other thing, I, 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 and to be fair, absolutely fair to him, I would say, and it's something we're very aware of in the archaeology of conflict, and particularly when we're dealing with um, people who are witnesses, but also with workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember that you know the first time uh, I worked on a site in uh, in Flanders. And first day, and I'm first time I'm dealing with um, fragmented human remains, including a disarticulated femur, mm-hmm. which are basically the result of what happens when uh, the human body is impacted by high explosives. Mm. Mm. And it's not nice to think about. And in fact, the person who was supervising the site, um, quite rightly, you know, talked me through it. Said, "Do you feel okay? You know, do you want to talk about?" It? Whatever, mm-hmm. and 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 I know that you know uh, a few years ago um, the conflict archaeology course at UCL uh, and Gabe Mashenska, who runs it, were criticised in the right wing press for um, snowflake trigger warnings. You know, archaeologists uh, deal with skeletons all the time. Is that um, in fact it was to use Captain Blackadder's phrase bollocks because uh, the course in particular deals with things like war crimes and war crime investigations and so on. Yeah. Some of the people taking part will have first-hand experience of those, either from those communities or as, for example, former members of the armed forces. Yeah, yeah. So but, 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 you know, but, but, there, there are mental health issues connected with this. Stuff. Yeah, but also also it, it, it's, it's okay to be suddenly distressed when you realise you're dealing with human remains. It makes I've seen Precise. people pass out in a, in a bone lab where there's not a hint of flesh. But they suddenly yeah. realise, goodness me, this used to be a person, and they and they 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 collapse. It, it happens, but that doesn't mean that we, partic- that we should. And particularly when when you, for example, you're dealing with the remains of children or neonates or whatever, you know, yeah. the, the, the the emotional impact of that is quite strong. So, but often, yeah, yeah, and, you, I'm sure you, I, I've certainly felt it. Yeah, yeah, you, you you are impacted by this, but this is the reason why. Again, we come back to this notion of function. What is the function of the act of remembrance, and what is the function of thinking about, for example, past conflicts? Is it to bolster a current political ideology? I don't think it should be. Is it to to yeah. puff up your sense of national pride in opposition to people around you? Because actually you say there's a difference between Nazis and Germans. For many people, there isn't, unfortunately, in this country. They will say, oh, yeah, it was the Germans, isn't it? And people like Marc Francois don't help in that narrative. But here, no. but, but here we have a point here, and I think this is, this is worthwhile. It's a good little reflection. Um, how ironic that this kid is wearing a poppy someone suggested on twitter he doesn't even understand its relevance every (laughs) every year at this time it's important that those are educated about the war this is absolutely ridiculous and this sent this set the sentiment not only i think expresses something true it is true that it's ironic that, that this kid is wearing the poppy but it also highlights something that i was trying to describe a little earlier in so much as people in this country they just do it and this is why there's conversations about what is the function of of of, of remembrance right. and that, so, so let, me, let, let me just finish that point yeah, go, go, go. It, it just yeah. where, just the fact that the people when they for example appear on the bbc they are given a poppy here here's a poppy just wear it we just just do it just do it 
means that that you can have tremendous misunderstandings about why we're wearing the poppy and i i agree with wearing the poppy i do but i don't uh, but i think the fact that 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 that, that this sentence highlights two ironies the irony of the wearing of the poppy in this instance but also the irony that 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 remembrance has become a habit and it's become something that is very very at times close to puffing up at times some people puff up nonsense using remembrance i think that, that this is the right time to be talking about this and to be actually thinking in the in freddie's case Yes, he needs to be educated, but also more broadly speaking, it is right to think, why are we remembering? How are we remembering? And what are we remembering? Uh, um, so so this is a Muppet, but I'm also happy that we've been able to have this conversation. And I'll, uh, you've had a couple of points, so you want to say. Yeah, uh, mm. just, just really, just to, just to finish. Mm. Um, one is on the point, the fact that young Freddie here was uh, wearing a poppy. Mm. Um, it is very possible that that poppy was pinned on him by the, the floor manager or the producer before he it went would, on it set. It would have been. It just would have been, yeah, because, almost certainly. Yeah, because yeah. It, exactly, because the etiquette of broadcasting in the UK at the moment is if you appear on camera, you wear a poppy. Yeah. Um, although, statistically, some people argue that the wearing of poppies in public is, is actually for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, it, that's that's a whole other mm -hmm argument and some people like for example the broadcaster john snow of channel 4 news refuses to wear a poppy because he says it's taking a political stance other people say you should wear a white poppy representing peace and reconciliation uh and 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 and, and, and so on others say you should wear a red poppy and a white poppy you know, this is that this is a constant you know this is a, a a discourse that will continue for some time the other thing and, and this is where i i think there is Young, young uh, uh, Instagram influencer Freddie has has a point: is that to uh, younger people, issues like climate change probably have more traction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, so if issues like memorialization and remembrance are to be to remain a live part of culture. Mm -hmm. then the conversation has to be had with young people as you say and it's not one of you shall mm. it's one of letting people discover for themselves the issues and the uh, the, the the background mm -hmm. and the historical and cultural background and making the decision that yes this is important to continue yeah no, I, I agree. I agree. In the face of all the other things that are in our, all the other things that are important in our lives, yeah. like the fact we haven't got a house, that there, there's no affordable housing, and the planet's going to fry in hundred yeah. within the next century. Well, and also, and also, I think people on both sides of that that moment accepting that actually it is possible to remember and to hold uh, what some people might consider to be a snowflake idea like climate change in equal reverence. One does not come at the expense yes. of the other, and it shouldn't have to. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Also, sorry, can I just end on just sharing an, an anecdote, just briefly? Please, and, yeah, no, and, no, and it's, it's not negative. It's, 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 a, it's something positive. Well, it is positive, actually. Uh, I remember distinctly um, the moment that actually the war, the war, um, came home to me. And it was because of, actually, because of this Britishness, because of this culture that we live in, where war movies are shown during bank holidays and so on and so forth. It, it, it's always there. It's always inescapable. And, and and I think there are reasons to criticise that. But I remember uh, uh, probably when I was eight, having heard about the war all my life up until that point, eight or nine, I guess, I was watching a black and white movie. And even though it was a film, I just had this sudden strong sense of of the pe the, yeah, the the characters in that in that narrative having no choice I, and i remember thinking to myself um goodness me what what would i have felt what would i have done if i felt as though my my country was about to be invaded or if there was such a, a moral imperative to fight back against for example the the, the nazi regime uh and and the answer, and the simple answer is and what it reminded me of was the fact that lots of these boys didn't just um skip off to war with a song on their on the you know on their lips they would have had fear they would have had 
reticence. They didn't want to leave their mum or their girlfriend behind. They wouldn't want to. They, it, that, that for me, actually, oddly enough, this this exposure to what Freddie has termed here something which is bad for your mental health was in that moment traumatizing. It was a little bit surprising for me as a nine year old. Just, just, I was just thinking, oh my, oh my goodness me. You know, the, your your life can be broken apart and you can be thrust into a conflict where you may well die. Um, that can happen to you. And that realization was incredibly powerful for me. And so, yeah. uh, as, as I say, the reason why I'm sharing that, it almost brings tears to my eyes just remembering it because it was such a powerful emotion. The reason why I'm sharing that is to say that I think that, that uh, and, and, and obviously you've touched on this, this, this thing of, we need to also be careful when we talk about people like Freddie here and, and, and acknowledge that actually uh, moments of challenge can be good for your mental health and so in my case in my case it actually informs my my sense of the importance of remembrance to reflect on that moment of horror that realization that i had and for some people this happens every year when they're at the cenotaph for others it's it, it is about wearing a poppy uh, but also unfortunately for some people remembrance is something that is a habit and it's a nationalistic habit and I think it's yeah. these conversations are crucial, and and to, to, and also they are deeply personal as well. I, well I, I'll end very 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 quickly on a, mm -hmm. on, a, on, a, on a on a personal note, and and, and, and hopefully an optimistic note. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one where uh, again, Freddie is not really aware of in certain in the in the way he um, describes it. Um, so. Muppetry born of an ignorance of the subject, maybe, hmm. um, is what we're talking about here. Rather, uh, 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 um, but uh, one of the things we try and do in the archaeology of conflict is to uh, use a phrase that um, I've heard uh, uh, colleagues use. Um, re, it, it's to sort of re-individualize the victim. Hmm. It's to stop seeing you know, n n the mass slaughter, you know, 60,000 casualties on the first day of the Somme. Mm. It's to see the experience of individual soldiers and those soldiers' families and communities. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that approach is aided by, for example, the growth in things like family history, mm. so that the experience of individuals has been almost returned to family life in some, in, in the case of where people have studied that you know their family histories and found the service records of their ancestor or great uncle or whatever who either um served and died mm -hmm. um or in some cases served and survived but never talked about it afterwards mm -hmm. so because of the trauma because of the ptsd and the things that you know people lived with um and the effects of those on families i remember vi vividly the um uh, it was Patrick Stewart doing Who Do You Think You Are about his father mm. and talking about his father and the trauma that um, he had suffered in World War II and speculating that maybe that's what made him abusive in his relationships afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, these things, uh, it, it is complex. It can be deeply distressing, but that's not a reason to not look at it. No. Um, because as individuals, as families, and as a society, we're probably better if we do remember, yeah, and try yeah. to understand, and and also understand each other now as well. So this is one of the reasons why I think exactly it, is it, exactly yeah. that's the point. It's yeah. something that has to happen in the here and now. We're not harking back to some no. you know, fantasy of the past. Yeah. Um, you know where where you know every RAF pilot look you know looked like Michael Caine or yeah. you know. It, 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 exactly. Yeah. Well, or, or, or uh, I guess most pertinently in terms of the headline specifically, um, that we're not making the mistake that Patrick Stewart's father suffered from by dismissing actually the mental health repercussions. You, it, the idea yeah. should be, yes, Freddie, you're right. It would have been harrowing, and it is a terrible thing to think about. But just think, those people didn't have this this sort of awareness. They didn't have this sort of support. And that's worth remembering. That's worth considering, you know. And absolutely, and, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that members of the armed forces serving and uh, veterans are walking around with those same issues today as we speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely.